Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Continuing this study on the Orit or the Ethiopic um, Torah, and continuing our study on the Ethiopic Torah, what we want to touch on is the, is the fact that there are four kinds or four versions of the Torah. There are four um, types of Torah. Most only know, I've heard of the so called Masoretic the Masoretic, the Hebrew Masoretic Torah. But more careful study and examination will reveal that there are four kinds of Torah. What do we mean by that there are four kinds of Torah? Well, namely, there are four ancient versions of Torah. Now, we know the Torah as the Orit, and as we went through right here, Torah, the the ta wa ra ha ta ra Torah, the instruction, we touched on Deuteronomy um, 4 and 6. Now, let us um, clear clear this for a moment. Let us, let us clear this for a moment and um, start out fresh. All right. Let's start out for clean a clean slate. Now, when we say there are four that there are four um that there are four ancient versions. Let's put this up here. There are four ancient versions. There are four ancient versions of what we know as the uh, Torah. There are four. There are four ancient versions. Now, what are these four ancient versions? First of all, there is what is known as, as we already discussed. Let's just put this here: the Masoretic. There is the um, Priestly, what's known as the Priestly. Then there is what's known as the Septuagint, or what's called the LXX, also the Septuagint, and then there is the fourth, which is called the Samaritan. Okay, the, these are the four ancient Torahs right here. Now, why is this important? When I Torah study, this is very, very important, the fact that there are four versions of the Torah. So when one talks about the Torah, it's important to, to, to recognize there are four versions of it. There's what's called, firstly, the Masoretic Torah. We know this as the, the I who you understand? Or some can call it the Yehu, the, the Yehuda version, right? There is the Lewawian, what's known as the Lewawian, right? Then there's what's known as the Likanat, the Likanat, right? The Likanat. And then we have the Sam Rawiyan. Then we have the Samrawiyan. Now there are four ancient. Now we our our reference for this is the life and contendings of uh, Kawestos. Kawestos, an ancient Ethiopian and Ethiopic document that points out how the Ethiopians were able to acquire the books, the latter books of the prophets, and how the returning um, Israelites, that remnant during the period of Ezra, Ezra and Nehemiah, during the time of uh, the restoration and the return from the captivities of, of Ezra and Nehemiah, how they were able to recover the, the old scrolls, such as the 
or read the first five books, as well as some of the earlier books, the historical books and the prophetical books, because when the returning Jews or the Israelites return during the time of Nehemiah and um, Isra, we know this from a um, variety of sources, but particularly according to the Jewish Encyclopedia, they say that they give high credit to Ezra or Isra, to Isra for um, rewri not rewriting, but for, for, for compiling. In other words, most of what the modern day Jews, according to the Masoretic, regard as the traditional. That's what Masoretic means, the traditional, which is called the Yehuda, the Yehuda um, version of Torah or the Orit, was acquired by Ezra and Nehemiah during the time of Ezra and Nehemiah through the Ethiopian, through the Ethiopian Hebrews or through the Beta Israel of Ethiopia, and this is this is one of the the suppressed parts and unknown, unknown generally. But some who know of this have suppressed this. This is why, if you look at the the Torah and you study any of the Masoretic Torah, they have certain um, points that are put there that that indicate. Certain that that Ezra was working with a version that he did not either completely understand or completely trust. But here's the key: what version was Ezra working with? You understand when he re-compiled um, and put together the, the 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 scrolls for those Israelites who were coming out of Babylon. He was working with an Ethiopic root Torah. He was working with an Ethiopic root Torah that we regard and believe to be the true priestly Torah, to be this Torah, basically, this Torah, the priestly Torah. Now, the Ethiopian um, Ori is interesting. The Ethiopian Torah is interesting for a couple of um, related reasons. Let us go into this. Take this down. This is very important to understand the four kinds of... Um, the four kinds of ancient Torahs that are out there. And this is the point that we will refer to, um, hopefully, again. But it's a, it's a point that needs to be understood. So when one's talk about Torah, we have to ask the question, well, which one? Was it the Masoretic? Remember, Masoretic means traditional. We regard the Masoretic to be the Ihud, or the, the, that of the Jews, the Jewish Torah. But originally it came from Yehuda, from that remnant in Ethiopia. And the life and contendings of Kawestos, which is an Ethiopic document, it tells of how the returning Israelites sent to the king of Ethiopia and requested the ancient scrolls because they had lacked this during the time that the Israelites were in the, the captivity. They had lacked the ancient documents and the ancient scrolls in their entirety. So exchange basically was made between the returning Israelites from the Babylonian captivity from Ezra and Nehemiah's time and the, that, that Ethiopian Hebrew or Hebraic Ethiopian establishment in the highlands of Ethiopia since Solomon and the Queen of Sheba's time. That David had a, had a son named Solomon, and Solomon had a son named David, and it was this David, the son of Solomon, who was the son of great King David, who renewed the kingdom of David in Ethiopia. This is where the significant and prophetic elements concerning Ethiopia that we find in the Bible, for example, Psalm 68, verse 31, Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God, um, such as, uh, I think it's, it's what Psalm, uh, I think, 87, where it says, and, 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 and Ethiopia, this man was born there, um, refers to that community of Ethiopian Hebrews or Beta Israel in Ethiopia. 
so the link between Isra and the return um, the returning Israelites, the Israelites who were returning out of the Babylonian captivity and the rebuilding of the wall of Jerusalem and, and the and the return to to um, to uh, a return to the, the the return of the Jews, what's called often the return of the Jews. Ethiopia and Hebrew Ethiopia plays a very significant role. And there are various tales by studying the Masoretic Torah. There are various tales that we can look at that are significant that basically point to point to this fact. But now these are the the the, the four versions of ancient Torah. Take this down and we'll pick up on this a little bit later on. But this is this is key, this is significant right here. Because what Torah you understand what Torah you understand are ones reading, whether it's the Ihud, the Masoretic, traditional, the priestly, or Lewawian, or the Levitical, the Levitical Torah. This is why we say the Ethiopian, the ancient Ethiopian scrolls are the foundation is the Lewawian. But then it has been augmented later on by the Septuagint, which is called the Likana, or the learnt one. The, the learned ones, the, the, the lika, likanat. Now, the Samaritan and the Ihud came later on. So it's the Lewawian that is, is the root one here, the Lewawian, the priestly, because with the Ark of the Covenant and with the uh, thousand Israelites from each of the 12 tribes, including the son of Zadok, who was Azarius, returning with Bainalechem Eben Hakim with Minulik or Dawit II to Ethiopia, they brought the foundation, a copy of the foundational document, which basically would have been the priestly or the Lewawian um, Torah. All right.